Guten Erev Shabbos. We're getting ready for Shabbos. It's a time of transformation, a time of faith, a time of hope, a time of purity. It's also Yud Gimel Tamos. Today we celebrate the year 1927 when the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe, who was sentenced to death for withstanding and not pressuring to Stalin, and continuing to spread Judaism in Russia, who was sentenced to death, was let free on the 13th of Tamos, and then he was exiled to Riga, Latvia, and from there he continued the remarkable transformation of Russian Jewry. Everyone ran away, but Chabad didn't. In the underground, in the yeshivas, in the mikvahs, in the shochets, in the slaughterhouses. In fact, my grandfather sat in prison in Russia under Stalin for the crime of teaching in the yeshiva, the total transformation. And the same is true of this week's Torah portion. Because one of the greatest questions we ask about this week's Torah portion is why is it named Balak? We all know the story. Balak is the evil king of Moab. He wants to curse the Jews. He's bewildered by the Jewish people's success victoriously. And he wants to make sure that they're crushed. And he hires this sorcerer, this prophet Bilam, to come curse the Jewish people. And the Rebbe, in one of his talks, asks a question. Why is the portion named Balak? There's six times the portion is named after a person. Noah, Sarah, Jethro. Korach, Balak, and Pinchas. And in each of the times, they're not wicked people. Even Korach, the rabbi says, his intentions were good. But why would we name the Torah portion about a man, Balak, who was evil, who was wicked, who wanted to curse the Jewish people? And the answer is very profound. Because what's the story? Balak wants to curse the Jews. And he hires Bilam, the prophet and the sorcerer. Bilam comes and what happens he pushes God God says don't go he pushes again and he goes and suddenly he's on the way and the angel stands in his way and he doesn't see the angel and he starts hitting his donkey and the donkey starts speaking and then what happens after he tries to curse the Jews but he ends it he ends up blessing the Jewish people and the most famous prophecy that Korach that Bal, that Bilam gives is the messianic era. He says, I see it. I see a star rising, but not now. I see it, but it's soon. A star will rise from Israel and crush Moab and conquer all the people of Shays. The rabbis say it speaks about the messianic era. Total transformation. When you take evil, you take terrible things and you transform it to holiness, to spirituality. The blessings. And the Rebbe, in one of his transformative talks, says that's exactly why the portion is called Balak. Because Balak epitomizes what it means to transform evil and make a blessing from it. You know why? What's the famous anecdote? They give you lemons, you make lemon juice or lemonade. You know why? Balak, you know who comes from Balak? Ruth. Ruth, the famous convert that we read about on Shavuot, the mother of King David, the grandmother of King David. Who's going to usher in the ultimate redemption? David. If you look at the portion, the rabbi says, everything in the portion is transformative. First, you have a donkey that speaks. It transforms to that which humans do. It brings out the capability that's totally opposite of what a donkey should be. Then, you have the prophet Bilam who tries to curse the Jewish people three times, but what happens? He ends up blessing them. Then, what happens next? You have the name of the portion, Balak, who has a granddaughter, Ruth, great-great-great-granddaughter, who ends up transforming and bringing along that prophecy of redemption. And the message that Rebbe says is like this. Don't get despondent. You look at the world, especially the last 10 months, and you say, what hope do we have? There's so much evil, so much sadness, so much corruption, so much hate, so much anti-Semitism. And you say, what am I going to do? Says the portion, we're naming it Balak, because this portion epitomizes the vision of redemption, 
the vision of the Messianic era, when all evil will be transformed into good. Every curse will turn into blessing. And this is the portion where we see it most transformatively, starting with the story of the donkey speaking, continuing with Bilam who wants to curse the Jews and blesses them thrice, and we end up saying that blessing in our prayers every morning, all the way down to the future redemption, when Balak's own great-great-granddaughter gives birth to King David, who from him will usher in the Messianic era. So my friends are going into Shabbos. The previous Lubavitch Rebbe, there's a famous story that they say, one of the saddest things that happened to the previous Lubavitch Rebbe was that when he was arrested and taken to Shpalerka, which was the worst prison of the Russians, and one of his interrogators was a Jew who came from the Hasidic heritage from Chabad. His name was Lulav. And he joined the Yevisiekta, which was like today, all those people who are Jews but hate the Jewish people. And he pointed a gun at the Friedrich Rebbe. He wanted the Friedrich Rebbe to say something. He wanted to interrogate him. He wanted to hear something. And the Friedrich Rebbe refused. And he pointed his gun. And he knocked him under the chin with his barrel. And the Friedrich Rebbe said years later in America that he still felt the pain. But he thought he was going to scare the Rebbe when he pointed the barrel at the Rebbe. You know what the Friedrich Rebbe told him? He said, this gun only scares people who have many gods and one life. But someone who has one God and many lives doesn't get scared of this. The Friedrich Rebbe transformed Russia under the darkest times. We're blessed to have so many people of Russian and Ukrainian Soviet Union Jewry who have transformed their lives and come closer. And they'll all tell you that back in Russia, the ones who were there in the darkest times was the previous Rebbe. He transformed it. This is a portion of transformation. Have hope in the spite of all odds. All the darkness in the world will be transformed. Israel will be strong. The Jewish people will thrive. And we will witness that transformation. L'chaim and good Shabbos. Baruch atan mechlom beri Good Shabbos and good